Hello, everybody. My name is Tina Coop, and I am an RN. We are here today to talk about uh, Fuller Park. And uh, we're talking about Fuller Park and the getting to know the community that you're going to be serving part of the day. Uh, Fuller Park, as you can see, is uh, one of the 77 small communities within the city of Chicago. It is number 37 on the list. Uh, Fuller Park has a tremendous tradition of poverty and violence as well. Fuller Park was named after Melvin Fuller, who is the chief or was the chief justice of the Supreme Court from 1888 to 1910. He was also the South, uh, South Park Commissioner from 1882 to 1887. And that's one of the reasons that Fuller Park was named after him. Fuller Park has been with us for over 100 years. It was first originally settled by the Irish uh, and then followed by the Germans. Both of the, the, Fuller Park has always been a lower poverty area to middle income, mostly lower poverty area. As you can see, this is the park that's within Fuller Park and uh, is, as I said before, named after it. And it is a good facility that has um, many good areas, basketball courts, places for children to play. Um, so it is a good, good center for the community. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Fuller Park itself. It's a two mile long stretch. Uh, it is one of the smallest communities uh, within the uh, Chicago area. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, during, uh, nine, during World War I to World War II, uh, the Irish and the Germans kind of moved out and the Slavic uh, and uh, Latino population and uh, the black population started to come into this particular area, uh, particularly uh, as we get towards 1950, we see that happening. Again, this is still a uh, low, low income area at this point, but um, the population became the majority black by 1950. Um, then we start in around that time, Don Ryan, Dan Ryan Expressway was created to make a link uh, between downtown Chicago and the outer edges. And when they built Dan Ryan, they ended up taking a third of the community. Dan Ryan Expressway runs basically through Fuller Park or to the edge of Fuller Park. Um, and it was not a bad thing initially that that happened. At that point, the Fuller Park area had uh, an unusual problem in that it had 30% of the population in that area that didn't even have indoor plumbing. Uh, which was quite unusual for the 50s, 60s areas. Usually, you know, that didn't exactly, wasn't really normal. Um, many of the people that uh, lived at Fuller Park were, like I said, lower to working class people and they worked at like the union stockyards. Um, so once uh, Dan Ryan was built, uh, you know, that kind of made an overpass. And anybody, you guys have all been on the Dan Ryan Expressway, but it's an overpass. It's kind of an, goes over all of these uh, not as uh, good income areas and, and into the city uh, to make a nice path for people going in and out. Unfortunately, it doesn't do a lot and didn't do a lot for the for those areas, and particularly Fuller Park, it didn't do a whole lot for them. Um, by the time uh, we rolled around to uh, the 1970s, um, the Union Stockyard shut down. So what little um, people that did work at the stockyards didn't have anything, you know, it didn't have any work any longer. So that made it even more difficult, which made it ripe for gang use. Uh, so in the 70s, there was a, a several prominent gangs, one being the Black Peas and the Gangster Disciples. And in the 80s, it was the uh, vice lords that were the, uh, you know, were the main group during that. And as you can see, the Brand Ryan Expressway, you guys are pretty familiar with that, but this is a picture from back then, uh, the, what it took. 
one of the positive things about Fuller Park is Eden Place. Uh, Eden Place is a, um, it's a nature facility that was not a nature facility when it started. Uh, there's a man by the name of Michael Howard that uh, noticed the three acre lot that basically had become a trash dump for everybody and anybody that wanted to, dr to dump anything there. And he was very concerned about the uh, lead uh, poisoning of the kids in the area. And so he tried to get that cleaned up and, and went really to move, uh, le legitimately move uh, heaven and earth to try to get this um, changed. And, and he did a wonderful job. Uh, he was able to get this center, center developed. It, uh, uh, you know, he led the cleanup, got the center development, and uh, it actually has won awards. Uh, to, you know, uh, it's a natural landscape. It has plants and animals that are, uh, you know, some, you know, to the region. Uh, it's very bio, bio uh, diverse. And uh, it was actually, uh, the Eden Place was uh, prominent in a PBS documentary about Eden's Lost and Found. So it's something that they're very proud of there. And uh, I know Michelle Obama actually has made it as a, one of those things that, um, that uh, helped the community. But honestly, I don't know if it uh, did enough to help the community, but it was definitely a good start. As you can see, this is what the, one of the issues with the community is, is that it's, it's dying for a lot of different reasons. We can talk about the stockyards that closed down in the uh, 70s, like we said, which stopped a lot of that. But there's also things that have come up, and we'll talk about those later, that have helped the population. But you can see that it's just consistently gone down. And some of that consistently gone down seems to have to do with the crime rates uh, and the impoverish, impoverishedness of the area in general. Uh, but this is a sad commentary for a, a community that is, um, again, one of, you know, one of the oldest in Chicago. So let's talk a little bit about the demographics of the people that live there. Um, not surprisingly, of course, it's 91% black. We talked about that. It hasn't really changed since those, since those uh, 1950s. There has been a, a uptake of Hispanics at 5% and some whites at 4%. Uh, the average of 52 to 48 male to female is pretty similar. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is, is that uh, the population is more youngish than oldish. Um, and that probably has a lot to do with the, um, with the crime rates and everything that's involved in it, even though there is uh, at least one uh, senior living facility within the, uh, within the area. So let's talk a little bit about those crime rates, because I think that uh, it's interesting to look at. So we're going to look at it and we're going to talk a little bit about what, what's happened. So we're, the total crime rate of Fuller Park uh, is, uh, these are per, per 100,000, as it says on the top. And you can see if Fuller Park's crime rate is twice, over twice that of the national average, uh, and, you know, probably 100 and 30, 40% over Chicago's rate. Uh, and that's something that needs to be worked on. But where it really tips the scales a little bit, as you can see, is the uh, violent crime rate, uh, which is uh, Chicago's violent rate is, you know, almost three times the average, but uh, they tend to go even more specific and be four, over four times the national average for violent crimes, which is uh, quite, you know, quite despicable and not something that we, something that needs to be worked on within the community. Um, the property crime rates, and of course this has to do with the fact of, of the people that are moving in or maybe don't want to move in is because there is, uh, you know, twice the national average uh, and even almost twice the Chicago average um, for, uh, you know, property crimes. So people aren't going to really want to, uh, to move into this area and we need to, so we need to get some people, we need to, to get the population uh, up and get the, get the community uh, involved in, in turning a corner. So let's talk about some things uh, about this. Uh, and these are things that people would look at that are moving in. The reason why we're showing this to you, you know, you guys are gonna be serving the people in this community. So you need to know uh, what, what's there, what's not there and things that we can help with. Um, 
as you can see, it talks about the livability, uh, the crime rate we talked about, uh, the cost of living is actually slightly lower, and, and the housing is, is exceptionally lower. Uh, but again, the, the crime rate is, is the, the horrible thing, and also the school systems. But then again, I think the crime rate, the school systems all have, um, have that balance in place where uh, when you see uh, those kinds of things happening, they tend to go together, unfortunately. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some uh, concerning statistics about the population. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because you need to understand that we are, you know, as uh, you guys are here to serve the population and to keep them safe. Um, but, you know, you are also here to help them to, to grow and to be, uh, you know, take care of themselves better. So this is a little bit of what we're going to talk about with that. Um, Chicago um, statistics talk about Chicago and, and that. We'll see the cancer deaths. Uh, the top three things uh, revolving around uh, Fuller Park of type of deaths are uh, heart disease, which is pretty common in the U.S. and, and pretty consistently the top, top one across the board. A little more prominent in Fuller Park, but not as massive as some of the other statistics. The second is cancer, and cancer is a huge concern in this area, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But the other one is the violent death or the injured, uh, the injuries that occur that come to death. And, and again, this goes down a lot of factors, and we're going to talk about what those factors are. Um, as you can see, the cancer rate uh, on the slide shows that it, it you know, it's uh, per 100,000, and it's not quite double that of Chicago, and uh, the national average is probably a little over double that. So that's the cancer. You see the heart disease rate, which is again very high for this area. Um, so that's those are concerning things. But I think one of the things that you have to look at, look down at, that's it's important. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a uh, tobacco-related deaths. Uh, which is another one that's over the top, you know, 428 and quite quite above the, uh, the city average. Something that that we need to look at when we're talking to people and just know what those averages are um, and understand uh, that. Now, a lot of these things people would look at as decisions that people have to make. Uh, and I think that uh, we can help people to make better decisions and to do things if we give them more hope of positiveness coming about because of it. And speaking of that, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Healthy Chicago 2025. Uh, we're talking about that. There's two. There's another initiative called uh, it's 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 Healthy 2020 to 2030, uh, which is a national project. But Chicago has their own, and I think it's quite interesting some of the things that they talk about so i'm going to talk about them if you look at the middle of the screen it says closing our life expectancy gap between 20 and 25 and, and what that means is is that um, in chicago the black american the black person living in chicago dies 8.8 .8 years earlier than any other um, ethnic group and that's uh a, not acceptable, and, and also something that can be worked on uh, in helping. And some of the ways that the 2025 plans on doing that, uh, they talk about, you know, their pillars, and that's their overall goal. But, you know, they have pillars to get to that goal. And one of the pillars is to transform their policies and processes to fight systemic racism and foster anti-racism and multicultural processes. And what that means for the layman is, is that they're trying to, uh, to give those people that are, you know, in that category, uh, some help uh, so that they can see that the system is actually there to help them, not to hurt them. And, and that's the problem with, you know, that there's a lot of distrust of the system and we are the system. So we have to kind of uh, try to promote trust within within the, uh, the city because we are the, you know we work for the city so we're going to be uh, helping these people out so we're you know that's part of it another part of it is strengthening community capacity and youthful leadership 
And this is something that we hope to help out with uh, to provide uh, community uh, strengthening. Uh, we'd like to have everyone be involved in our communities uh, to help with the youth, uh, whether it's coaching or, or doing anything that you can do to help with the youth. Again, we want to promote uh, a trust between uh, uh, not just Fuller Park, but we're talking about Fuller, Fuller Park as uh, those those residents there and in the city and and what's what we're trying to do here. And uh, the next one is called uh, the, one of the other pillars is further uh, health vibrance of the communities by improving care for those of the population that is impoverished or uh, maybe uh, uh, have racism against them. So these are goals that they have, and I think they're pretty pretty good goals um, because Chicago Chicago needs that help in a general, but uh, specifically Fuller Park because we're talking about them. They fit into this. They're like an extreme version of all of these things. Uh, their, their death rates are a little higher. Their, everything is just a little more on the uh, extreme edge. And uh, so we need to be aware of that fact and, and see what we can do to help them uh, get to that point. And again, um, it's going to be difficult because this, this community has a history of being impoverished, you know, over 100 years worth of history. And it's something that uh, we're going to have to use trust between uh, us as people and, that, and, and the community to be able to work together to do it because that's really the only way it's going to happen. Um, so those are kind of the things that, that we're talking about. I think that another point to, to make is that because of the high levels of, uh, of um, I'm sorry, because of the high levels of um, violent crime in this area, that we have to be concerned about that violent crime and, and its effects, not just on the people that are directly involved, but those that are indirectly involved. Uh, if anybody's been in the military, there's quite a bit of, of, of research in reference to what happens in war zones and Though I don't necessarily look at this as exactly a war zone, it, it does have some some similarities in the respect of this much violence. You know, people see the violence; they might not be directly involved in it, but it has to scare them, or it has to put a certain act on them, or put a certain perception on them that maybe they can't trust the, this person or these people, or they don't know who to trust, and or they don't know who's going to help them get out of it. And I think that that's where uh, we need to help them to, to learn how to do that and, and get out of it as a, as a group. Um, in studying Fuller Park, I found that, uh, you know, those three things that I talked about earlier, heart disease, cancer, or the violent crime and, and the, um, the, 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 the other one that's really interesting isn't just the violent crime deaths, but the actual deaths from, um, accidents, which generally tends to go down the path of people uh, not being, not making good decisions. You know, maybe they're drug related, uh, maybe they're taking drugs, maybe they're not taking drugs, maybe they just feel like uh, they have to make decisions to do things that are a little on the edge because they don't know any other way to, to get out. Uh, the only, you know, that, that's the only way that they can get that leg up that they need to, to, to get out of what they might feel as a whole uh, of poverty or a whole of, of doing it. And, you know, this is not something that's going to go away. It's something that we're going to have to work on for an extended period of time to get people to trust back into it. But this is the story of Fuller Park. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, definitely let me know. Thank you.